Hey guys, this is Jake Alexander with Casual Commerce, and in this video, I'm going to be walking you through step by step how you can set up your custom shipping rates and everything related to shipping inside of your Shopify store. So, in order to get to this section, you just need to log into your Shopify dashboard and then go down here to settings, and then we're going to click on shipping right here and this error message probably won't show up for you it's only showing up for me because i have a um, fake address in here so the first thing that we're going to be looking at is the shipping origin so this is going to be where our packages are shipped from now before we get into the video i do want to mention that depending on the type of fulfillment that you're doing that's going to alter how you are going to set up your shipping settings so for example if you're um, drop shipping from aliexpress then setting up shipping settings is extremely easy and basic and you can usually do it in like 30 seconds but if you're shipping products yourself or using a custom fulfillment center then it's a little bit different and you need to tailor your shipping settings accordingly so in this video i'm just going to be walking you through all of the functionality of the shipping section and showing you how to set everything up so the first thing is going to be the shipping origin so if we click change shipping origin we can go ahead and manage it by clicking right here we can edit our location addresses and location settings by hitting manage locations and what this does is this is just the address that our packages are going to be shipped from so if you're drop shipping from aliexpress this doesn't really matter but if you are shipping the products yourself or using a custom uh, fulfillment center inside of the u.s then you're going to want to go ahead and put that address in here because if you're fulfilling products yourself or using a fulfillment center most likely you're going to be using usps calculated shipping so in order for the shipping rates to be calculated correctly you're going to want to put your address in here so after we've done that the next main section here is going to be the shipping rates at checkout so here we can edit our shipping zones and then we can go ahead and add a bunch of shipping rates in so by default you can see that it sets us up sets us up with domestic united states and then um, the rest of the world which is 241 countries so what we can do to edit these is we can just first go into domestic and click edit here and once we open this up you'll see that there is three different types of rates that we can go ahead and add in there is price based rates weight based rates and calculated rates and depending on the type of fulfillment you're using uh, it's going to depend on which um, that's going to determine which rate type you want to use so if you're drop shipping for example you're probably going to use price based or if you're fulfilling products yourself you're probably going to use a calculated rate so i'm going to show you how you can go ahead and create each one of these so the calculated rate is the easiest one to set up so you would just click add rate and then you can just select which carrier you're going to use most of the time um, most people prefer usps so you select that and then the rates here will be calculated based on the customer's address and the weight of their order and uh, usps has all of these different services here and the base ones by default are first class mail first class package and then priority mail and priority mail express so in order to do that you can just go ahead and just click done you can leave all of this default and then our calculated rate here has already been set up so if you want to go ahead and save that change you can so calculated rates are really simple and this is what you're going to be using if you are fulfilling products yourself now i'm going to show you how you can do a price based rate as well now even if you are fulfilling products yourself you may still want to do a price based rate um, due to you know you may want to offer free shipping or something like that so I'm going to show you how we can do that here so first I'm going to get rid of this one so we can start from scratch so we would click add rate and I could just put in standard shipping here and then based on the price you can see we can put a price range and then based on that price range it will determine how much our customer is charged for shipping at checkout so we could do zero dollars 
to $50, for example, and all orders that have a cart value of zero to $50 would be $5 shipping. So we could just click done. And now let's say we wanted to create a free shipping rate alongside this. We could just go back to add rate and then just type standard shipping again. And then the minimum order price could be $50, $50 and one cent. And then if you check free shipping right here, that's all you have to do. And we click done. So now what this would set up is all orders between zero and $50, the customer would be charged a $5 shipping rate and all orders above $50, um, your customer could get free shipping. So you'll notice a lot of sites have offers like this where um, like shipping is free over a certain dollar amount. So that's how you can go ahead and set that up in here. So weight-based rates work pretty similar to price-based rates, except instead of using price as the main metric to go by for the shipping cost, it uses weight instead. So weight-based rates are probably uh, less common than price-based rates, but they're still good to know how to set up. So we can just go ahead and do this here. And then what we can do is you can see here instead of a price range we have a weight range so we could go ahead and say all orders between zero and 25 pounds it will cost five dollars to ship and we could go ahead and do the free shipping thing the same as we did with price based rates if we wanted so we could add a another rate in here and then all orders above 25 pounds and let's say a hundred could be free and then just click done so that's how you can customize all three of the rates in here price based weight based and calculated so like I said depending on the type of store you have and the type of fulfillment you're using that's going to go ahead and determine which type of rates um, you want to use so the next thing I want to show you is how you can go ahead and edit um, certain regions here so something that's common within the US is especially if you're using like a price based uh, rate or weight based rate um, sometimes certain areas of the U.S. are going to be more expensive to ship to than others. Now, if you're using calculated, this is already going to be factored in. But if you're not, then you may want to separate the regions. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if you come here to where it says United States and click edit, let's say we wanted to go ahead and um, have a separate shipping origin for the mainland US and then all of its territories would be separate so we could come in here and you know remove Alaska because that's not part of the main mainland 48 states and we can go ahead and just remove everything that is a territory and not connected to the main center of land mass so we could keep going down and then click done. So now what we could do is click save. And now I'm gonna show you next how we can go ahead and have a different set of shipping rates for the other 12 states and territories that we went ahead and excluded. So if we go back to shipping and we scroll down here and we go to add shipping zone We can type in United States and then put like not mainland or other territories, uh, whatever you want to put here. And then we can go to countries and regions and then click manage. And then if we type in United States, you can see that it already autofills uh, the 12 states and territories that we deselected from the first zone. So if we click this right here, and then click save. Now we can create separate price-based rates 
weight-based rates and calculated rates for the non-mainland states and territories within the United States. So we could go ahead and go through here and do just like we did before and then save. And now we can go back. So kind of similar to that would be doing something like that with the rest of the world. So for example, um, a lot of times it's quick and easy to just have a flat rate for international shipping. But the thing is, sometimes, um, especially if you're fulfilling um, from the U.S. and you're shipping orders yourself, it's going to be a lot cheaper to, let's say, um, ship a package to Canada or to Mexico, for example, than it would be to ship that to Japan. So if you have certain countries that are a lot cheaper or maybe you want to... Um, Box specific regions together like Asia, Europe, and then you know the North American countries that aren't the United States. We can go ahead and do that by going ahead and adding another shipping zone. So let's say we wanted to add a separate shipping zone for Canada. We could just type in Canada here and then go to countries and regions and then put in Canada. And then save that and then we could go in here and add a rate for Canada and in this case we could put in like Canadian shipping because whatever the name of your shipping rate is the customers are going to uh, see that so you could put something specific to them and let's say we could do like the same things we were doing before and it'd be like a little bit more expensive click done and then you can just go through here and do these same things for um, whatever one you need to use just like we did earlier so the importance of knowing how to do the separate shipping zones um, is definitely beneficial especially if you're shipping products yourself and shipping costs are going to vary obviously uh, between shipping to Canada or you know shipping to Europe or shipping to like Japan so you could go through here and add continuously add shipping zones um, just like we just did for the other countries or you can make a bulk region for example, like Europe, and then just add all of the European countries in the one as well. So that is how you do everything inside of the shipping rates and checkout section. So the next section we can look at here is shipping labels. So this is only applicable if you are printing your own labels and fulfilling orders yourself. So you can see here, the label format is just depending on what type of printer you have. So if you have a regular printer, you use this one, or if you have a label printer, you can switch to this one. You can see that it switches to a smaller label specifically for that type of printer. And then if you scroll down here, we have packages here. So this is also only applicable if you are fulfilling your own products. So by default, we have the sample box right here. It gives us a sample box size, but we can go ahead and add in our own if we want. So let's say um, your product is uh, like some type of water bottle or something, and all of your um, boxes that you ship in are all the same size, and you use custom packaging. What you could do is put in the size um, the exact length, width, and height of that custom packaging and then determine whether it's a box, envelope, or a soft package and then put in the um, exact weight of the package itself uh, without your product in it. And this is important because um, if you're using calculated rates, um, it's going to include the rate of your package itself. So the calculated rates obviously go into um, take the weight into account of the product which you set on the product page but you also want to make sure that your package weight is included on here and well as well so that way your uh, shipping calculations will be spot on so we could go ahead and say if we had a custom package that was like eight by four by eight and it weighed half a pound and it was like our main box for like certain product here so water bottle and we could set this as default package and then add it in so another thing we can do is if we go to add package there's carrier packaging so let's open up usps here and let's say instead of using custom packaging you were using the packaging that um, 
USPS provides for you. So, you know, you can order a lot of these off of their site for free. And then you just go ahead and um, pay a flat rate to ship with these boxes. So if you're using one of these flat rate boxes, you can go ahead and select it and then just add the package in. There's no more um, information necessary, so you can just add it in. And that is how you go ahead and navigate the packages section. And the next section here is packing slips. So like I said, this is also only applicable if you're fulfilling your own products. What you can do is you can customize packing slips that you can print, and then a packing slip is just something that you put inside of the package that's kind of like uh, customized and personal, and you can edit that by going here. And you're going to have to use HTML or CSS to go ahead and edit the packing slip itself. So you may need to get a developer to help you with this if you're not familiar with code. So if we go back, there's only one more section inside of the shipping area that we can take a look at, and that is the additional shipping methods and the custom order fulfillment. And to be honest, you don't really need to mess around with these too much. So you're pretty much just going to be using from packing slips and up. So with that said, that pretty much covers um, how to customize your shipping settings on Shopify. And if I missed anything, go ahead and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And with that said, if you liked the video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more similar Shopify training. And with that said, I will see you guys in the next video.